it's time to reveal the anime character who suffered the most. Is it Diavolo, who was trapped in an infinite death loop of Muda? Is it Subaru, or another death loop character? Since it's not like he's the only one out there that exists, Isekai plus death loop equals original writing. Or is it one of the many seinen characters who have experienced a bit of a rough time with a slice of trauma? Take Guts for example, do I really need to explain what Donovan did to him as a kid? And when Griffith cooked the hell out of him in top 10 anime betrayals. I really hope YouTube doesn't strike me for this. So. How do we develop a magic formula which decides the king or queen of suffering? I know, let's do a tier list. Hold on a sec, doesn't this all seem too silly? I honestly don't understand the point of power scaling the suffering of anime characters, implying it's a good thing to have been exposed to the shittiest excuse of a life possible, like it's some kind of achievement. Hell, what's stopping me from writing the edgiest character in existence, who makes Kaneki look like a Care Bear, and then submit a script to a random ass anime studio in Japan, and they think this weeb might be onto something. What is missing one vital ingredient for success? Lollies. Nah, but seriously, I want to address why I think comparing the suffering of anime characters is kind of stupid and a waste of time. Not as pointless as debating over which fictional character who will beat every other one in a fight though, that's truly cringe. By the way, if you'd like to see me roast the hell out of the basement dwellers who waste their time arguing if Goku can solo fiction and waste their time making a checklist of every time they beat someone in a fictional anime character debate, then help me get to 20,000 subscribers and I will make that video for you guys. The problem I have with memes like this is that it compares characters who have suffered something more grounded and realistic to the infinite death loop characters that only exist in more fantasy related stories. But Aeon, how can you say Guts' suffering is more realistic when his best friend turned into BDSM Batman on crack? Look, I'm not stupid, or at least I don't think so. Berserk is clearly a fantasy story, but in terms of the ordeals and problems that Guts face, they feel like they could have actually happened in a medieval society, minus the demons and magic and all that shit. In contrast, an infinite death loop simply doesn't happen in real life, as far as we know. Okay, some of the scenarios in which the character dies might have some realism in that instance, but overall, it's trapped within this impossible cycle, which is what the majority of the suffering is based on. Just the scale of these death loops can be so absurd that it's ridiculous to try and even quantify. Diavolo was stuck in an infinite loop, so that means he must have suffered an infinite amount. Well, until Pucci reset the goddamn universe in part 6, was Diavolo finally free? Araki probably forgot about it as usual. It comes down to the tone and style of the story. It's hardly surprising that death loops are usually more common in the fantasy or sci-fi light novel and visual novels, where they are more easy to implement in the story. And yes, I know Diavolo is from a manga. Don't mention it in the comments. A story with fewer or no fantasy elements, like many Satan manga, tend to focus on realism with their emphasis on personal loss, where 9 times out of 10, if you die, no return by death or magic god is gonna save your sorry ass. Also, I think how the stories implement the events which feature suffering has a huge impact that isn't really considered in charts like these. How we bond and synthesize with the characters, in addition to how much time we get to spend with them, are arguably more important than whatever hell they get exposed to. I hate to use Guts and Diavolo as examples again, yes I read and watch other series, but these two characters are familiar with most anime fans, therefore I will keep beating a dead horse by using them. We get to bond with Guts over the course of time, seeing his relationships with the members of the Band of Hawk as Griffith gives him a purpose in life. That's why Griffith's betrayal and all the delightful events which follow hit so deep. Maybe it's not fair to compare Diavolo, but hey, 
That's what you suffering tier list makers have been doing, so I digress. We hardly get to spend much time with Diavolo as a character, unless you count Doppio, but they are pretty much confirmed to be different people in a way, just sharing the same body. There isn't really any emotional stakes or drama going on when Diavolo gets stuck in the death loop, and I don't think it's trying to either. The story is trying to say that Diavolo was this messed up mob boss who tried to kill his daughter. Let's see him in endless pain. Again, whether he did deserve this or not is up for debate, and maybe because of the severity of his punishment, you can feel a bit sorry for Diavolo, but it's nothing, nothing compared to how sorry you feel for Guts. Hopefully you understand the points I'm trying to make, and I know there are exceptions to every rule. Context matters a lot in my opinion, which makes trying to power scale suffering seemingly redundant, but hey, I won't stop you all from having an opinion, like my opinion has been thrown in your face from watching this video. Let me know your thoughts down below about this, and don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this style of content.